pleased to introduce Dr. Kenneth Cooper. My first awareness of Dr. Cooper was almost 40 years ago when I signed up for a newly offered exercise class, an aerobics class, at the YMCA in Elkhart, Indiana. What probably attracted me to the class, though, was that it was co-ed, but <clears throat> I believe that it did make a difference in my life. Unlike my father, his two brothers, and my seven male cousins, who all had serious and or fatal heart attacks before reaching my age, I've managed to avoid that problem. And I attribute much of this to Dr. Cooper's pioneering work and exercise, diet, and other areas of prevention and wellness. You've read about Dr. Cooper's background in the Keyway, so I'll simply summarize by saying he is the father of aerobics, has lectured in more than 50 countries and authored 19 books, has a thriving medical education and research program in Texas, and most recently has effectively focused his attention on the health and fitness of America youth fighting childhood obesity. Dr. Cooper, on behalf of the Denver Rotary Club and of people all around the world that have benefited from your work, welcome to Denver. We're honored to have you. RJ, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to come home We've had a place in Beaver Creek, Beaver Creek, Colorado for the last 28 years. So Colorado is our second home, but I do thank you for inviting me here today. The next few minutes, I want to talk about a new aspect of health care reform as follows. In 1950, the cost of health care was $12 billion. 1970, $70 billion. In 1990, $700 billion. Last year, $2.2 trillion. Represents some 16 to 17% 17 of the GDP. The closest country in the world that spends that kind of money on health care is Switzerland, also Germany, 11 to 12 percent. If we could drop from 16 to 17 percent of our GDP down to 11 percent like the next countries in the world, which say the American taxpayer, $700 billion per year. Too much care, too late. Max Hyman from, Washington, from Boston said this recently. We spend an average of $8,000 per person per year on health care, whereas in Cuba, they spend $184 per person for health care, and we have the same life expectancy. Something's wrong. Too much care, too late. I'm afraid, too, that we're concentrating on the wrong type of health care. Now, health in general, medicine in general, is classified in three different areas. The prevention of disease, number one, acute care, number two, and disease management, number three. All efforts have been on acute care. Now, if you think with the Obama plan that the cost of health care will go down if we put all this new emphasis on too much care too late, you're mistaken. What's happening now? What about the uninsured? I saw the newspaper yesterday where one of our health, major health centers in Dallas Methodist Hospital System wrote off $80 million last year of people who couldn't pay. I write off patients all the time. If one hospital organization is paying off $80 million, who's going to pick up that if we have universal health care provided everybody? Is it that bad? We spend way too much for health service dollar on desperate measures, which prolongs death, not life. The problem with that, too, is that prevention is a byword. When I was in medical school back in the 50s, we were taught that preventive medicine is a center of the medical specialties. There's no profit in health. As R.J. knows, I started my center in Dallas some 40 years ago, and I had a true office and two employees. And my critics said that, my supporters said that you can't be successful practicing medicine if you limit your care to taking care of healthy people. We've grown a true office and two employees to some 650 employees, 23 physicians working, 110,000 patients. Why well, have been so successful for these reasons, I believe? Number one is because of my belief. I'm very strong in my beliefs. And I believe divine intervention is one reason I'm here today. Number two is we've proven that it's cheaper and more effective to maintain good health and regain it once it's lost. 
And number three, if people realize they have a need, you provide a service, they get the results they want, they'll make you successful in any field. Keep those things in mind. What about preventive medicine? Does it pay? Let me share with you an article in the Wall Street Journal back in June 2009, how Safeway is cutting health care costs. My friend Steve Byrd, CEO of Safeway, wrote this article. In this, he points out, health care spending has outpaced the rise in all consumer spending by a factor of nearly three since 1980, increasing our GDP up to 18% by 2009. He goes on, 7% of all health care costs are direct results of behavior. 74% of all costs are confined to four chronic conditions, cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, and obesity. 80% of cardiovascular disease and diabetes is preventable, and 69% of cancers are preventable. We pick up cancer every day with our center in Dallas. Long before it caused any symptoms, we're saving lives every day. And I'll tell you, ladies, this rule that came out yesterday about not having mammograms for 40 to 50 years of age is a terrible mistake. I can guarantee you that because we pick up early cancer all the time and save lives with that. Safeway is healthy. <laughs> what they do at Safeway? Their Healthy Measures program is voluntary and covers 70% of all the insured non-union workforce. They're focused on tobacco usage, healthy weight, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels. If they pass all four of those tests, their annual premiums they pay are reduced $780 per individual and 1564 families. They pay their non-smokers some $243 a year for non-smoking. What happened? Over the last four years, their increase in the cost of health care has been flat. Corporate America in that period of time increased health care expenditures by 38%. On and on, we work with Corporate America. One of our divisions is our, is our ventures division. We operate some 12 organiz 20 organizations for Corporate America. We've been able to show once a corporation gets involved in a worksite wellness program, expect these things to occur. Number one is reduction in cost of health care. We've proven that. Number two, reduction in absenteeism due to disease. People who are physically fit aren't sick as much. Number three, an increase in work productivity when the people get involved in a worksite wellness program. And number four, it helps you recruit the best employees in the marketplace if you can offer them a worksite wellness program. And number five, reduces turnover. Classic example, one of our companies has bought aircraft engineering. They have a subsidiary branch down in Stewart, Florida. And Elmer, Vody, Elmer Doty, who's the CEO, made this statement recently. He said one that most people don't look at is workers' compensation. In 2005, Vaught had 1,270 claims that cost of 10.5 million. This year, one year later, we reduced our claims 600 and saved $5, five million dollars on reducing worksite, med worksite programs there. So there is a cost, there is a benefit from that. Preventive medicine, acute care, and finally, disease management, which one am I talking about? Cover of Time Magazine back in June by Mike Rosen from the Cleveland Clinic. It's entitled, It's All About Prevention. The first step toward containing health care costs is to avoid getting sick. The problem that we have in medical care in America today is we have no disease management. We have diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, all these various things, obesity. And what happens, I as physician give you a recommendation, put you on medications to control those problems. Number one, they don't take it. Number two, they don't follow recommendations. What happens, they're back in the hospital with a diabetic coma, something of that type. So what we've found in America is that people are treated, put in the hospital, or discharged, and two weeks later they're back in. And that recurring thing is an extreme cost of health care. With disease management, we can prove that we get that person out of the hospital, get involved in a disease management program, and keep them out of the hospital. Prolong life, reduce the cost of health care, all these things. That's what Mike Rosen says in his program here at the Cleveland Clinic. Also, a major article was published, a book entitled The Innovator Prescription by Dr. Christensen from, uh, Mr. Christensen from Harvard uh, Business School. And his fifth chapter is Disruptive Solutions for the Care of Chronic Diseases. I'd encourage you to look at this book, The Innovator Prescription. And he talks about a key reason why such a large share of our health care dollars is spent during the last 18 months of life is because this is when the complications of chronic disease have finally set in with a vengeance. I know that practicing medicine for 53 years. I can attest to that. In sum, any program for resolving our runaway health care costs that does not have a credible plan for changing the way we care for the chronically ill can't make more than a small dent in the total problem. 
What are we doing as far as trying to change this? 